How's it going everyone and welcome back to another episode of the AFC Bournemouth Youth Academy Legends series here on FIFA 20. So we're currently at the end of March and I have left it here at the end of March for two reasons. One, because I forgot to save it anyway. <laughs> um, and two, I've actually, um, I'm actually okay with this because the next game we have is against Walsall and we are on the exact same points as Walsall um, in the league. They're in third, we're in fourth, so if we beat them, we move into the top three. But first, let's see how we got to this position. Here are the highlights for March. I also have some player upgrades to go through. Uh, I actually have four in total, so we're, let's go through them now. Okay, first, this upgrade's now been done. The others have also been done, so uh, we shouldn't have any issues now. Uh, so the first upgrade is for Carl McDonald. It's a comment in episode one from Emoji Fun, and he and he wasn't very specific with this upgrade, but I just went for it anyway. Some nice Nike shoes, 
uh, untucked shorts, normal sock eye, and a wristband. So I went for the Nike, I think it was the Nike Tiempo Black with a blue tick on the side for the shoes. Uh, he's got an untucked shirt, normal sock eye, and I gave him a green sweatband on his right wrist. I only chose green because he's, you know, he's from Northern Ireland and they wear green for their home kit. So that's why I chose green. The next three upgrades all come from Kennedy, so thank you very much for those upgrades. He's now done four of the five upgrades so far in this series. The first one is for Ludovic Richard. Uh, he's now wearing the number five. Uh, he's got a short-sleeved untucked shirt with red boxing tape on both hands. The New Balance Tekela V2 Supercell Bayside boots. And also, uh, yeah, that's it. The next upgrade is for the captain, Antonio Moyano. He now wears a number 14 as opposed to number... Shut up, Alexa. The next upgrade is for Antonio Moyano. He's now wearing the number 14 shirt. Again, he's got a short sleeve shirt, which is tight this time. Uh, where are his black gloves? I didn't give him his black gloves. Uh, but he will have black gloves on. I'll do that after. Short socks and the Nike Neymar Jr. Vapor Elite boots. And the final upgrade is for John Ezelike. He now wears a number 55 shirt. Um, he's got a long sleeve tight shirt with no wrist accessories at all. Medium sock height and Nike Mercurial Superfly blue boots. Those are the upgrades. Oh, let's get on with the episode. So as this game is taking place on a Wednesday night, we have a few tired, we have a t few tired feet, which is annoying, but uh, we're just gonna have to deal with it as best we can. I also called up three new players from the youth academy. Three. I did that way, didn't I? Um, as you know, they were um, well, they wanted to leave. So uh, Justice Udo, Frank Miarco, and Tulani Tiesi, who actually starts this game. Uh, in place of um, the injured Will Green. Uh, it's just put him in by itself, so I thought, you know what, I'll keep him in there. Uh, in terms of changes, I'm going to take off Castell and bring on Belcourt. And I think that's okay. I think we're alright there. That's going to be the team. Let's go and beat Walsall. Moyano. This is lovely play, actually. Moyano to McNeil. Back to Moyano again. Cuts back. Plays it through. Great ball. McNeil! Goal! That's so... Brian McNeil is back. I feel like I say that every time. Man. There's, there's always an episode where one of my strikers just underperforms. And last episode, that striker was definitely Brian McNeil. This episode, he's come back. Look at that for a great bit of play. And boom. 1-0. McNeil to O'Donnell. Back to McNeil. Back to Moyano. To Robertson. Now he's got the pace. It's Ian Robertson. Can he get another goal? Oh, he skied it. Oh, dear. Oh. E. I don't know how he's managed to put it that high. Jeez. Lavery over the top looking for Adebayo. Oh, that's a great save from Turner. Tiesi wins the header and manages to find Belcourt with it. Brilliant stuff. And now we can get on the counter-attack here. Cole McDonald. Here he goes. It's Cole McDonald. He's running out of options real quick. He, but, oh, Moyano. Oh, I didn't think that cross was actually going to Moyano. Oh, deflected, that's why. But he just couldn't adjust his body in time to get it round. Yeah, I felt the same, Dylan, mate. Don't worry. Here's Robertson. Moyano. Ah, flip. Kinsella. Madrid to Kinsella and Dempsey is completely clean through here and Dempsey's made it one all. What happened to that side of my defence? Where did that side of my defence go? My defence was all on the other side of the... Oh, I just had no right hand side of my defence. Like, where are they? Where have they gone? They're, they've gone. They don't exist. Norman, this is Lavery. We don't want Walsall getting a win and now that's the last thing we need. We don't want Walsall beating us. That is, the, that is literally the last thing we need. Yes, TSE, nice. That's a great ball as well from whoever that was. I think it was Belcourt or, or Richard who played that. O'Donnell's got free space to run into. And he finds the ball to Moyano! Antonio Moyano, the Argentine beast. That's what I like to see. He can finish that one all right. Oh... Oh, that felt good. That felt really good. What a ball that is from O'Donnell. And Moyano 
on his left foot. Beautiful, beautiful. Norman with the ball in, it's Bates, oh my god, what a save from Turner. Oh, oh my god, hot was in my mouth for a second then, but Mason Turner, wow, fingertips. We've got this, Brennan gets the cross in, yeah, there was no one there to get it to, but we've managed to win, we've turned over the result that Walsall did at home against us at home they beat us 2-1 we've beaten them 2-1 on their own patch and because of that we've now moved in to the automatic promotion spots which i love we're also two points closer to port vale as well they drew with swindon and accrington won so i think now actually accrington are top of the league so we're no closer to them i think they were on the same uh, points as question. port vale as well okay turns out i was wrong we were accrington weren't on the same points as port vale they're on the same points as, well, no one. <laughs> they were just, whatever. Anyway, um, we're now in third. We're three points ahead of um, Walsall. And, um, yeah, we're now only four points behind Port Vale, which realistically is where we need to be as the top of the, top of the table. But hopefully we don't get sacked for just being promoted. I mean, the update's happened now, so hopefully it's not as brutal as possible. Because if, it, if the update hadn't have happened, I probably would have been sacked for being promoted but not winning the league. I also never updated you on what countries the scouts have gone to. So we've got Archie Bingham, who's headed off to Denmark. We've got Will Hill, who's headed off to the USA. And we've got um, Emil Hatunen, who's headed off to the Czech Republic. The reason I picked those three countries, or at least two of them in particular, is Denmark and the Czech Republic are the two home nations of the actual scout. Like, obviously, the scouts we have are... Arch Bing and Will Hill and Emil Atunen, but it's in like the actual scout, which obviously is not them. That's their two home countries. And United States, I just thought, why the hell not? So we have two new players coming into the Youth Academy for this month. Gabriel Strenad from the Czech Republic and Mads Clausen from Denmark, who's a, goal a six foot six goalkeeper with the potential of 83 to 94. It's here where my potential downfall could start as I start simulating games. Oh, well, that's a good start. We've managed to win 2-0, and Ezelike did not get injured because he still had the plaster and half fitness. So I'm happy with that one. This could be a massive, massive game. Our final game of the season is against Accrington at home. That's our final game of the season. Before that, we've got meh teams. I think Salford are in the playoffs, possibly. In fact, let me double check the table before I'd say all of this. So I'm looking for Carlisle, Crawley, Wimbledon, and... Salford. None of them are in the playoffs. Crawley are the closest. Um, Salford are 21st, Carlisle are 22nd, and Wimbledon are 23rd. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> I'm going to have to play at least two of those. Well, one of those. I'm probably going to play... I don't know. I don't know. Which one's at home? So we've got, we've got Carlisle at home, then we've got Crawley at home, and then we've got Wimbledon and Salford away. I'll play, I'll play Crawley, I'll play Crawley, that makes sense actually, I'll play Crawley because they're the highest up team, yeah that makes, that makes sense. So here we are then, Friday April the 9th, 2021, good Friday, Carlisle at home, can we get a win? If we could, that would be amazing. And we don't, we get a nil-nil draw, eee, that's not good, that's not good at all, and we also got an injury to I think it was Dimi Kalata and he's out for three days okay that's fine we've now gone back down to third in the league um, we're still four points behind Port Vale we need them to slip up at least once as in like we need them to lose at least once and hope that they just don't win all the rest of their games and same with Accrington really uh, we need Accrington to just not win one of their games we need to win all of our games and hope that Accrington don't win one and Port Vale don't win two. That's basically it now. Um, I think if we keep on our, our um, form, I think we're safely promoted. But it's still only one point in it between us and Plymouth at the moment, so anything can happen. So here we go then, Bournemouth against Crawley Town. Big game this. This is the second best team we have left to face. Um, yes. That is the team. There are two changes at fullback. Um, Charpentier is at right back, and Niarko is making his debut at left back due to um, 
a lack of fitness from Teko Okoto. So, uh, yeah, let's go. Here's McNeil. Moyano. Oh, he's got space here. Moyano. He's got space. And he's got the pace. It's Antonio Moyano to make it 1 0. And he's put it wide. Oh, that shouldn't be happening. Nyoko with strength there. Look at, look at that. That's brilliant from the debutant. Richards. Moyano to McNeil again. McNeil looking for Moyano. Nyoko's lost his man. Oh, but he's just. Bell has just elbowed him out the way. Palmer. Oh, he's got past Casillas. He's got a bass in his way. Palmer's hit the post again. Oh, we can't can't let that keep happening. Get that thing out of there. Suddenly Crawley have found a sec that found fifth or sixth gear again or whatever. Labala has a shot. It's saved by Turner. Turner decides to punch that one rather than catch it, and Richard gets extremely lucky there. That's offside, surely. That was offside. Uh, Polion's been brought down there by Casillas. It's going to be a yellow card, but anything to stop Crawley from scoring. We need to score ourselves. We can't just keep. We can't just settle with stopping Crawley from scoring. Now, uh, Ballman with the free kick, and it's over. Okay, it's fine. It's fine. Turner into McNeil. It's Robertson. Turns his man. Ian Robertson. Oh, Morris with the save. One last chance, one last chance from this corner, and no one can win a header, but one last chance. Casillas wins it. McNeil, yes, come on, Brian McNeil, yes. I can't believe it. He's actually done it. Brian McNeil, what a, <laughs> what a finish, what a finish. As in. To the game, not what a finish from McNeil. He just blasted that near post. Come on! Oh, God. Oh, what a finish to the game that was. Oh. Oh, God. I'm, I'm going to lose my voice if I'm not careful. Oh, my days. I can't believe we actually did it from that corner. We did it from a corner. It just dropped perfectly to McNeil. I couldn't tell if it had gone in or if it hit the side netting or not. And then I saw McNeil wheeling away on celebration, and I was just like, oh. Oh, Bournemouth won, Crawley nil. Oh, what a win, what a win. It's tightened up at the top again. Look at that. <laughs> We're on 79, and Port Vale and Accrington are both on 80. So Port Vale have lost. Port Vale have lost a game, which is what we needed. We now need them to not win another one. And if we just beat Accrington in the last game of the season, we are sound. Unfortunately, we're going to need simulation to be kind to us at this point, I think. Because I don't think I have time to play another game other than just the Accrington one. Right. Wimbledon away from home. Oh, I'm exhausted after that. Yes, a 2-0 win. Moyano and O'Donnell. That's what I like to see. Let's see where we are in the league. I'm just thinking about that every time. What's the table looking like? Port Vale have lost again, and they're now in fourth. <laughs> Is my team going to get promoted after all? We're now in second. Accrington first. Bournemouth second. Plymouth, who've come out of absolutely nowhere, are in third. Ugh. Oh, my days. This finish to the League 2 season is probably one of the best you're ever going to see. And if... I'll tell you what, if we all lost, if all four of us lost that next game and Walsall won, then holy crap what a finish it would be. This game could make or break our title chances. Salford against Bournemouth. Well, it's a 3-0 win for us. Oh, they had, they had Wiseman sent off, but that was after we'd scored all three of our goals. So, Richard, Castell and Aubert getting the goals of three Frenchmen. Where are we in the league? If Accrington have lost... Oh my god. Oh my god, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Port Vale are out of the automatic promotion race. They've lost three games in a row. They've lost three games in a row. And now they're out of it. And it's between us, Plymouth and Accrington. And we play Accrington. So if we just... We, well, realistically, we need to win. Who are Plymouth playing? Who are Plymouth playing? gone on the wrong thing. 
Plymouth are playing Crawley. Where are Crawley now? Okay, so they're not in the race for the playoffs. So Plymouth are just playing Crawley. They're just mid-table fodder at this point. Um, Accrington, and Accrington are playing us. So we need to win. We need to win because I didn't expect Plymouth to be just there. Plymouth are just there. So if we don't be, if we don't lose against Accrington, we finish above Accrington guaranteed. But we need to win to ensure we finish top of the league because Plymouth are right on our tails. It's going to be a big one. Let's go and do it. I forgot to actually mention that we are promoted. We have been promoted 100%. It's now about the league title between us, Accrington and Plymouth. Whoever loses this game does not win the title, basically. Because, well, they can't. <laughs> so this is a huge, huge, huge game. Saturday, the 1st of May, 2021. The day where the league title in League 2 is decided between two of these teams, between these two teams and another one. <sighs> McNeil, good ball in. Oh my god! Oh, Conroy nearly gifted us a goal in the early minutes. Pritchard! Oh my god! I was not expecting that shot to come in at all. That was that was scary, that was. That left Turner scrambling for sure. Our passing's quite poor right now though. Sussex. This is uh, Keneally. Yes, there we go. Casirez, nice. Moyano. Carl McDonald's making a run. I see that run from Carl McDonald. Here he is. Carl McDonald! White. And it's half time. Nil nil. We need a goal. Yes, Richards. Richards done very well in this game. It's probably one of his better performances for sure. Here's McNeil. Moyano. Robertson. Oh, you needed to get it quicker than that. You took too long to adjust. The ball's been cleared straight to Ludovic. Richard though goes for goal. Whew! The power behind that. Oh my days. The power behind that strike from Ludovic Richard. Shame it was straight at the keeper. Oh, it's been given away. We've got four players here who can potentially... Ah, McNeil still has it. Back to Aubert. No, what the flip was that for a shot? You just passed it. Look at that for a pass. Like, what was that? Castell. O'Donnell. McNeil. Or bear. Oh, the pass deflected. That's going to be it. It's going to finish nil-nil. It's going to finish nil-nil. But, have we won the league? Have we won the league or have we just been promoted? I don't know at this point. We know Accrington haven't won the league. But have we? I don't know what these celebrations mean. <laughs> have we won the league? I'm waiting for a trophy to appear. I think because of these celebrations, if I remember correctly, this huddle celebration means we have done it. I'm, 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 I'm still waiting. You're going to hear the music playing in the background if we have. And we have as well. We've done it. Okay, I'm going to turn the camera off. I'll let you guys enjoy the celebrations and I'll be back with you afterwards.
Plymouth ended up drawing with Crawley. Oh, Port Vale lost again. They lost their last four games. So, the order of the league is Bournemouth, Plymouth, Accrington, Walsall, I believe, and then Port Vale in fifth. And there we go. There is the final league table. We win the league by one point. We ended up losing the least amount of games in the league eventually. Just eight losses. Well, I say just eight losses. That's actually quite a lot. But, um, yeah, uh, eight losses. We won, we won 24, drew 14 and lost eight. Just bear in mind, this is the first season I used these players as well. This is the first season. In the first season last time, we finished about 20th in the league, like in the Port Vale series. So, wow, it's, it's stunning. But honestly, I needed to do this, otherwise I'd get sacked. Plymouth in second, Accrington in third, Walsall in fourth, Port Vale finished fifth despite being top of the league for, for like more than any other team this season, I'm pretty sure. Forest Green seventh and Bolton, sorry, Forest Green in sixth and Bolton in seventh. So one of Walsall, Port Vale, Forest Green or Bolton will join us in League One next season. And at the bottom, I should be correct in saying that it is Crew who finished bottom, which is a shock considering that in real life they're top. So guys, I'm now going to hit you with a little squad report, and I forgot to do one of these at, uh, during the January transfer window, so I apologise for that, but here we go. Mason Turner, overall of 76, he's gone up by 6. Tommy Vertinen, overall of 65, he's gone up by 2. Teko Okoto, overall of 63, he's gone up by 9. Frank Niarko, overall of 65, he's gone up by 1. Mateus Bernardo Cipriano, overall of 63, he's gone up by 3. Cesar Caceres, overall of 59, he's gone up by 2. Francis Abbas, overall of 61, he's gone up by 3. Enweke Dankwa, overall of 58, he's gone up by 3. Tami Nokwi, overall of 61, he's gone up by 5. Ian O'Donnell, overall of 63, he's gone up by 4. Justice Udo, overall of 60, he's gone up by 1. Tulani Tiesi, overall of 63, he's gone up by 1. Arthur Charpentier, overall of 61, he's gone up by 5. Will Green, overall of 64, he's gone up by 4. John Ezalike, overall of 63, he's gone up by 2. Gregoire Castell, overall of 72, he's gone up by 5. Darren Berry, overall of 60, he's gone up by 4. Keith Donaghy, overall of 64, he's gone up by 4. Teko Dangbo, overall of 61, he's gone up by 3. Pierre Gautier, overall of 61, he's gone up by 4. Mathieu Mallet, overall of 61, he's gone up by 6. Michael Nkrumah, overall of 57, he's only just been called up. David Belcourt, overall of 63, he's gone up by 4. Joel Turner, overall of 69, he's gone up by 5. Ludovic Richard, overall of 76 already, and he's gone up by 5. Barry O'Byrne, overall of 63, he's gone up by 3. John McCutcheon, overall of 64, he's gone up by 4. Jack Walker, overall of 66, he's gone up by 3. Hugh Watson, overall of 62, he's gone up by 5. John Brennan, overall of 69, he's gone up by 4. Lucas McKeith, overall of 66, he's gone up by 5. Colm McDonald, overall of 75, he's gone up by 7. Ian Robertson, overall of 65, he's gone up by 3. Javier Alphon, overall of 56, he's gone up by 4. Alistair Watson, overall of 68, he's gone up by 8. Dimi Kalata, overall of 66, he's gone up by 3. Christophe Aubert, overall of 63, and he's gone up by 10. Antonio Moyano, overall of 73, he's gone up by 8. Brian McNeil, overall of 63, he's gone up by 4. And just before we go as well, I'm going to take you through who's in my youth academy at the moment. Some of these players may get called up, some of them may not. So let's go through this. We've got Matt Clausen, overall of 66, he's got a potential of 85 to 94, and he's a goalkeeper. Colm Barr, he is 66 overall, and he's got a potential of 93 to 94, and he's a goalkeeper. Musa Amadako, 
He's overall of 48. He's got a potential of 77 to 83, and he is six foot four. And he's a centre forward. I need to remember the position. <laughs> Kennedy Azikawe, overall of 58. He's got a potential of 75 to 81, and he's a centre back. Edward Afrifa, Afrifa, even. He's he's an overall of 58. He's got a potential of 72 to 78, and he's 17 years old and a centre mid. Duma Mkaza. Overall of 55, he's got a potential of 80 to 86, and he's a CDM, and he's also 6'6". Six six. Makete Make, overall of 57, he's got a potential of 77 to 83, and he's a left mid. Dimi Wagane, overall of 59, he's got a potential of 76 to 82, and he's a centre attacking midfielder. We've got Samuel Kingdom, who is probably Wakili Kingdom's son, I guess. Um, overall of 52, he's got a potential of 76 to 82, and he's a right back. James Afenu, overall of 58, he's, uh, he's got a potential of 73 to 79, and he's a CDM, and he's also 6 foot 6. Reese Tremblay, overall of 52, potential of 71 to 94, and he's a centre mid. Anthony Cunningham, overall of 60, with a potential of 73 to 94, and he's a right back. Conrad Blaha, I don't know how that's how you, if that's how you say his name, but he's, he's also got a very, very weird face as well. His face looks too big for his head. He's an overall of 58, he's got a potential of 68 to 86, and he's a right mid. We've got Conrad Novak, an overall of 58, he's got a potential of 70, sorry, 68 to 94, and he's a right back, and he's also 6 foot 4. Gabriel Strenad. Overall of 63, he's got a potential of 84 to 94, and he's a right winger. And that is it for the Youth Academy. And that is also it for Season 1 of the AFC Bournemouth Youth Academy Legends Career Mode. If you guys enjoyed it, make sure to smash that like button down below. Subscribe, hit that big red button if you like what you see and you want to see more. And of course, hit that bell next to the subscribe button if you liked what you see and you want to, don't want to miss a video of mine. Guys, until next time, thanks so much for watching. Peace.